Linear combinations. We're considering x to be a random variable with e of x equals mu and variance of x equals sigma squared. Now what happens if you do a x plus b, where a and b are constants? We are taking our x distribution, we're multiplying it by something and adding something on. So imagine our original distribution, which we're, I'm going to represent as these little white dots. So they're the individual items in our distribution. What would happen if I did 5x plus 3? Um, as our new distribution. So each of those dots gets multiplied by 5 and added 3. What would then be the expectation of 5x plus 3, or the mean of that new distribution, that orange distribution? How could we work it out? Well, you can quite sensibly think about this, that it would be the average of the original one multiplied by 5 and then added 3. So there's mu and there's 5 mu plus 3. Now, thinking about the variance is a little trickier. The variance of this new distribution, how does it compare to the variance of the original one? Well, the plus 3 doesn't really make much difference. If we look at that variance that, and we know variance measures spread, if you moved all of those dots up by 3, it's not going to change how far out they were spread. So adding on a constant or subtracting constant does not affect spread, it just will appear slightly further up or further down the line, it won't change how, much, how far out they are spread. Okay, so what does happen? Well, if you think about this spread of the, the, the new distribution, the 5x plus 3, the original one had um, a standard deviation away from the mean, that's then got multiplied by 5. How each of those dots are spread from the mean um, is measured by the standard deviation, so now each of those dots will be spread five times more. Now, since standard deviation gets squared to be the variance, we have to do five lots of that standard deviation squared. That's the same as doing five squared times the variance of x. So in general, we get these results. Now we can also extend this a little to think about if we were adding two different distributions together. So if we had a distribution x and a distribution y, we can do a similar sort of thing. So the, the mean of the, the sum of the distributions is the same as if you did the sum of the dis, uh, if you just added up the means of each of the distributions separately, and you can multiply each one by a constant as well. That's kind of straightforward and you, it makes logical sense. You can see what's happening there. The variance you need to be a bit more careful with. So if we were looking at the variance of um, our two, our, our x distribution and y distribution and they get multiplied by something and then added together or subtracted, we need to consider how, we, how would you measure the spread of that. You would have to think about the spread of x and the spread of y after it gets multiplied up by a and b and then you'd have to add those two spreads together. Remember spread is always a positive measure so no matter whether we have added or subtracted those distributions from each other we will always add together their variances. Okay, sums and multiples. We're going to think about the difference here um, with the calculations between whether you are adding up a repeat of, the, of an item from your distribution or whether you're thinking about something that has been multiplied up. So in this case x1 plus x2 plus x3 is not the same as doing 3 times x. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now if you think about this in context here's something that might help you to figure out the difference between them. If we look at the total weight of three separate boxes we'll assume they have the same dimensions that would be the x1 plus x2 plus x3 uh, where x's are um, weights so it's a distribution of the weight of the boxes and the three boxes are three instances of x and that's versus the weight of a box which is three times bigger so 3x represents a box that is is three times heavier or weighs three times more than those original boxes so with the three separate boxes added together we can expect that the total of those boxes would have a mean of if we'd done the mean of each of them added up. So that's the same as doing three lots of the of e of x. Now if we had a box that was three times bigger, similarly we can expect that the mean would be three times bigger. So no surprises there. Now the variance is where it becomes interesting. 
what you saw on the previous slide was that when we are adding two um, or more distributions together, we will add together their variances. So in this instance, where you've got three separate boxes added together, you would take three separate variances and add them together, which would be three lots of the variance of x since they all come from the same distribution. Now, if you make a box that is three times bigger, you also saw on the previous slide that if you do three times x, that's the same as doing three squared times the variance of x. So the box that is three times bigger actually has more room um, for variance. It's going to vary by more. Okay, so we can generalize these results like this. So the sums of them look like this, where you just do n times the expectation or variance of the original distribution. But when you're multiplying up, um, you get a difference with the variance um, equation. Okay, so let's see some examples. We've got a random variable x with a mean of 10 variance 2, and we want to find the mean and variance of these. So for 3x plus 1, that's going to be the same as doing 3 lots of e of x plus 1. For half, oh sorry, and the variance. Um, so then carry on with your variance calculation, and it looks like this. For the half x minus 2, if we go ahead with that one, we get an expectation of 3, and the variance, again, similarly, following through our calculations, we get the result of a half. Okay, a random variable y has a mean of 15 and variance 4. We want to find the mean and variance of x plus y and 2x minus 3y plus 5. So let's start with x plus y. The expectation will be e of x plus e of y. The variance is the variance of x plus the variance of y. Now with 2x minus 3y, the expectation is going to be 2 lots of the expectation of x minus 3 lots of the expectation of y plus 5. And the variance looks like this. So we've got 2 squared times the variance of x. Remember we now need to add the next bit. Even though 2x um, then we did minus 3y, we want to add the variances so we can measure the spread completely. Now 5 does not affect the variance at all, so we're not doing anything with that. Okay, a factory produces chocolate bunnies. The weights of the, choc of the bunnies have mean 150 grams and standard deviation 3 grams. They're packed in crates of 12, um, and the crates have a mean weight of 200 grams and standard deviation 5 grams. So that's the box itself. Okay, so we want to find the mean and variance of the weight of a full crate. So, and then our second part will be that the factory made a special edition Easter bunny that was five times heavier, and we're going to find the mean and variance of that. Right, so the mean and variance of the whole weight, well, the expectation of, for the weight of a bunny is 150. The variance is 9. The expectation for the crate is 200 grams, and the variance is 25. So the total would be 12 lots of the bunnies added together, plus the crate. So this will be um, 12 lots of the expectation of the weight of the bunnies, plus the expectation of the crate. So we get... Two kilos. Now the variance from our formulas that we just saw before, 12 lots of the variance of B plus the variance of the crate to give us a variance of 133 grams. Now the special edition bunny that is five times heavier, we're going to find the mean and variance of that one. So this time we're not doing five lots of the bunnies, we're doing a bunny that's five times bigger. So I'm going to call it G for giant bunny. The expectation for the weight of the giant bunny is the expectation of 5B, which is 5 lots of the expectation of a normal bunny, which is 750 grams. The variance will be the variance of 5 times our normal bunny size. So that's 5 squared times the variance of B, which gives us 225 grams.